The Story of Queen Bee by Gabriel Kerasim Once upon a time, there lived a princess called Rodika in the castle of King Stephen, her father. The queen died at the time of her birth and she had no brothers or sisters. She was a pretty princess with dark brown eyes and long, silky, cinnamon brown hair. Rodica loved to play in the castle's garden and feed the swans on the nearby lake. The king was very much loved by all the people in his kingdom. He was generous and wise and ruled with a gentle hand. One day, the princess went to the lake to feed the swans. It was a sunny afternoon. The trees and the grass looked fresh and green, and the flowers were in full bloom. As she approached the lake, she suddenly saw a little bee falling into the water was slowly drowning. The good princess ran to the shore at once. She felt sorry to see the little creature fighting for its life, so she had to save it. But Rodika couldn't bring herself to touch the bee, fearing she might get stung. Finally, the princess found the solution. She picked up a little piece of wood and put it close to the bee so it could climb onto it. Sure enough, the bee grasped the wood and slowly started climbing out of the water. Once it was safe on the top, the princess placed the wood on dry land. For a few minutes, Rodika watched the bee drying itself up and starting to flap its little wings happily. The princess was about to go and feed the swans when she heard a tiny voice calling her. Princess, princess, I would like to talk to you. The princess looked around but she couldn't see anyone. The voice was coming from the ground and much to her surprise, Rodika realized that the little bee was speaking. Is it you, tiny bee, who is calling me? She asked. Yes, it is I, princess, said the bee. My name is Luminitsa, and I am a princess too. You saved my life. How can I repay you? The princess smiled and said, You don't have to repay me. You are a creature in need, and I just wanted to help. But, the little bee princess continued, I can bring you sweet honey and rose petals. The princess replied, I have honey at the palace and I prefer looking at and smelling the flowers in the garden where they live. If you bring me their petals or if I cut them, they will die in just a few days. Although, there is one thing you can do. Tell your bees not to sting me when I smell the flowers. It hurts so badly. The bee princess buzzed and said with a smile, Your will shall be done. But you should know that we usually sting those who steal our honey, threaten our children, 
or those who don't let us be when we fly by exploring their houses. We are curious creatures and that is why we fly so close to humans and animals. But we are not evil. When we sting someone, it has to be for a very good reason. For each sting brings death to the bee. We only sting to defend ourselves. Or when we are frightened. But we also use our stings for a good cause. Old people suffering from a disease called rheumatism sometimes get relief from the venom in our stings. So you see, we don't just attack people for no reason at all. The bee continued. However, I want to help you. So if you ever find yourself in need, just say, Princess, Princess of the Bees, come and help me in my needs. Say it three times and you shall be helped. Once again, thank you for saving my life. You are welcome, the princess said. Many years went by. The princess had grown into a beautiful young woman. She kept visiting her beloved swans at the lake, although not as much as she used to, for she had other avocations. In the meantime, her father, King Stephen, had remarried, for he wanted his little girl to have the love of a mother as well. But things had not turned out as the king had planned. The new queen did not like Rodica, and not only she was jealous of her, she also wished for the princess to go away. Thus, she would have gained complete power and influence over the king. Life became harsh for the princess as she was forced to remain locked up in her chamber for many hours at a time. She was no longer able to visit the lake and talk to the lovely swans or wander through the flowery meadows and watch the bees playing among the wild flowers. The queen was hoping to drive young Rodica to despair so that she will run away from home. But the princess loved her father too much to cause him such pain. She neither left nor told him about how the queen was mistreating her. One day, however, Rodica escaped the confines of her chamber and ventured into her favorite haunts, even though she knew she would get in trouble with the queen. Nevertheless, the princess knew that the only parent who truly cared for her had never objected to her going there. As she was passing through the castle's garden, heading to the lake, Rodica heard the voice of the queen speaking to a man she did not recognize. And make sure to send your men into the princess's room tonight at midnight. Kill her and then handle the king. I'll be away this evening, so no one can ever say I had anything to do with this. Tomorrow, this castle will be mine, and the kingdom will be ruled as it should be. The queen laughed as she warded off swiftly and silently, disappearing beyond the high bushes. The princess was very scared. She quickly ran to tell her father about the plot. King Stephen listened but fancied his child was making things up. He accused his daughter of being jealous and ungrateful to the queen. 
Papa, I tell you, it is true. I heard them myself. The king put his hand on his daughter's forehead. Yes, you seem to be a little overwrought, my child. He called the servant and asked him to accompany the child to her bedchamber. Rest for an hour or two, my dear, and you will feel better, the king said and dismissed her. The princess cried all day long. She was ashamed of having been accused of jealousy, and above all, she was scared for what was about to happen to her and her father. Suddenly, she remembered the bee princess's words. She wiped her tears and said with a shaking voice, Princess, princess of the bees, come and help me in my needs. Rodika said this three times as she had been told. In the blink of an eye, a bee started crawling on her arm and the familiar voice spoke. What is the matter, dear princess? Rodika told her story, to which Luminitsa, the bee, replied. I am now the queen of all the bees. We will help you. Then she flew away. That night, the king went to bed troubled by the thought of his daughter making up that terrible story about the queen. As soon as he fell into a deep sleep, both the king's and the princess's bedchambers were invaded by thousands and thousands of bees that covered the floor with a thick layer of honey and wax. As she was too nervous to sleep, young Rodika watched the bees working, although she could not understand their plan. By midnight, the bees were done and all of them gathered in a shadowed corner. Soon, two men holding daggers entered her bedchamber. But as they stepped in, they slipped on the layer of wax and honey. Then the bees swarmed all over them, covering and stinging their bodies. The assassins were stuck in honey, so they couldn't escape and kept shouting and crying out in pain until the castle guards arrived and took them to the dungeon. The princess jumped out of her bed and ran straight into the hallway and to her father's chambers. To her relief, the king was safe and sound. His potential killers were also caught by the guards and sent to the dungeon. The king ordered his guards to imprison the wicked queen, for now he was convinced that his daughter had been telling the truth. King Stephen took the princess in his arms and said, I am sorry I didn't believe you, my child. Thank you for saving my life. The brave bees are the ones you should be grateful to for they gave their lives to save us, she replied. Indeed, all the bees that had stung the evil men were slowly dying. They were sinking to the floor one by one, buzzing and fluttering their tiny wings. The princess told her father the story of how she befriended Queen Bee, who, in return, promised to help her whenever needed. The king wept, deeply affected by the sacrifice of all those little creatures. If he had only listened to his daughter's warning, none of this would have happened. He told the princess that he would like to speak to Queen Bee as well. The princess called Luminitsa three times and Queen Bee appeared on Rodika's arm. King Stephen said, 
Dear Queen Bee, many of your bees have died to save me and my daughter. How can we ever repay you? Queen Bee replied, Your daughter saved my life out of the goodness of her heart. So did we. But if you really want to help us, proclaim to all the people of this land that whenever they smell the sweet scented flowers, enjoying the wonders of nature, do not cut or trample the delicate blossoms, but to let them live. Thus the bees will be able to collect the pollen and the nectar from each flower to make honey. Tell the people to not be afraid and harm us. We just want to fly around and do what we are meant to. And when you harvest our honey, please leave some for us as well. The king smiled and said, So be it. The wicked queen and her accomplices were locked in the dungeon for the rest of their lives. The new laws were enacted and the whole kingdom dutifully obliged. Many years later, after the king's death, Princess Rodica became queen in the great queendom of Romania. As far as I know, even today, the peace and the people of that land still live in peace and harmony, learning from each other as they did in bygone days. The End